Hello and welcome to this video course on ranking your YouTube channel higher. All right, so this is video number one, and this is going to be the introduction to the YouTube video traffic course. Now, before we talk about the course, I want to make sure that you're in the right mindset. So I want to say that the goal here is to focus on building a brand. If you can start thinking that way, you're going to have a long term strategy which will actually help you not only in the YouTube traffic and getting ranked on YouTube and getting natural organic traffic and all of that, but it'll also help you in many other ways as well. Now, while that may not make a lot of sense right now, it will in just a second. Now, this is not about throwing hundreds or even thousands of backlinks at your YouTube channel properties or videos. What you really want to do here is to focus on quality and not quantity here. And by doing that, it will actually help you in the long run, as you'll just see in just a minute. So before we get started and talk about the course, what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction, of course. Video number two is what this is not about. And I want to make sure that I cover this because a lot of times when we talk about ranking on YouTube or Google or getting traffic or of any sort, there's a lot of assumptions that are made. So I want to make sure that we cover those assumptions and possibly roadblocks that are blocking your way. Video number three, we'll talk about what Google wants and the strategy. If you understand what Google wants, then it'll make more sense on what the strategy is all about and how to implement it correctly. Video number four, we'll talk about the ring, which is the strategy here. And of course, video number five, we'll talk about how to automate the ring. Video number six, we'll talk about account creation. And video number seven, we'll talk about how to outsource the account creation and the very tedious process of building the ring. And of course, video number eight, we'll talk about testing this out. And while that might seem a little bit simple, it really is and does take some time to make sure that everything works. So with that said, let's talk about getting started and what you're going to need. You're obviously going to need a product or service to sell. You're going to need to have a YouTube channel. You're going to definitely need to have money to outsource. If you do it yourself, it's going to take about a week or sometimes two weeks. But once it's set up and is good to go, then everything is automated. But at the end of the day, your time is valuable, so I recommend just outsourcing this process. But knowing how everything works and all of that will allow you to teach whoever you outsource this to, or you can pick and choose people that we will recommend that we have used personally to set things up for you as well. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two, and we're going to talk about what this is not. One of the biggest mistakes that we see a lot of people make is they assume that they, they know certain things, they know the strategy, they bring in what they already know and what they've seen work and automatically assume that that is what the strategy is about. But by doing that, what ends up happening is we see that people set themselves up for failure. And we don't want that for you. We want you to be able to succeed as much as possible. So that's why I'm covering what this is not. All right. So to ensure that you're able to successfully implement the strategy, we want to discuss things that you do not want to do. So as I mentioned earlier in the previous video, this is not about throwing hundreds or even thousands of backlinks at your YouTube channel or at your properties. In fact, YouTube has become very, very smart in figuring out if you are actually gaming the system. 
So what we're trying to do here is think of a strategy that works long term. So you want to focus on quality and not quantity here. It's better to get a few backlinks that are of quality rather than getting thousands of backlinks that don't even relate to your content. And we're not talking about automated softwares either. So like I said, Google's very smart in figuring out how to detect fake backlinks or computer generated backlinks. They're able to detect patterns. So what you're trying to do here is not follow any sort of pattern whatsoever. You want to make sure that it looks natural as possible because otherwise Google will penalize you in the future. It may not be this month, may not be this next year. It may be the two years later kind of thing, or it might be even this month. So what you really want to do is focus on a long-term strategy that is going to last. Now, obviously, we're not going to know exactly if the strategy is going to last or not. But part of the strategy is figuring out what Google wants and fulfilling that. Now, one secret to knowing whether a strategy will last or not is to ask yourself these questions. So this strategy, along with other strategies, you should ask this question over and over. Is this a shortcut? And does this seem spammy? And best of all, will this upset your visitors? So the people that are coming to your YouTube channel via google.com or any other site, is this going to upset them? Because if it does, then guess what? Google is not going to like what you're doing because they care more about the people that go to Google and or go to YouTube and type in a keyword. They care more about them because they are who they are catering to, essentially. So now that that is out of the way, let's discuss what Google wants, which is really the crucial step in understanding why the strategy will work. So now that you have an idea, don't upset the visitors. If it's spammy, if it's a shortcut, this is going to upset them, right? So... What is it that Google wants in relation to this? Well, we'll talk about that in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three, and this is all about what Google wants and the strategy. Now, we don't know exactly whether this is true or not, but based on the data that we have seen and based on the data that not only has worked for us, but for many others, is that Google likes brands. Now, it's not necessarily that they are particularly liking brands because brands like make a lot of money or anything like that. But what we've realized are certain variables that make a brand stand out. So they don't exactly go out and tell people that they like brands, but based on the data that we've seen, we have seen brands rank better. So why is that? Why is it that Google seems to rank brands better? It's because brands last long term and they oftentimes provide value. Remember, going back to what makes the visitors happy, it's the value that they are offering, right? At least the majority. So you'll notice that brands tend to have a really good following of fans that love their content. So why is that important? Well, their concern isn't really necessarily the brand, but giving people that are searching certain keywords on Google or YouTube, giving them what they want. Now, you'll notice that brands attract a consistent following as well. So Google likes it when they find that there's not only a good following, but a good engaging and good interaction. So their fans click and engage with their content more. And YouTube likes that. They love engagement. If you take a look at videos that rank really well, you'll notice commonality and you'll notice that they have a lot of likes, they have a lot of comments, Essentially, they have engagement and engagement is essentially 
the currency of YouTube. So whether somebody gets a bad comment or a good comment, a comment is a comment. A comment essentially, if you think about it, is worth about $1. Now, we're just saying that because it's like currency, engagement. Now, this means there is a higher CTR or, in other words, click-through rate. So if you have fans that really love a specific brand, they're most likely going to come back over and over again, right? So higher engagement is what Google likes to see. Higher engagement means that the fans really like the content. So this is based on the data that we have received and based on the data that we have observed. So the strategy here is to make sure that you look like a brand and you do backlinking like a brand. Make sense? So what does backlinking like a brand look like? Well, if you think about the visitors that are coming to that brand, they are looking at it, they're engaging with it, they're sharing it with their friends. Now, like I said earlier, there's no exact, this is the way it is, but based on the data that we have gathered over the years and what we see, what works and what hasn't, we can safely say that looking like a brand will be better for your YouTube channel. And of course, gathering a fan base and a good following that is interacting with your content is also key. Now, if you look at brands, they have many social properties besides YouTube channels. They've got Facebook.com, they have Twitter, they have Snapchat, and more. So it only makes sense for your brand to have the same properties in your brand name and interlinking to each other. Right. So let's say, for example, that you upload a video to YouTube, then it's going to make sense for you to post that same YouTube video or share it via Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat and more. So essentially, we're interlinking them together. And that kind of brings us to this strategy, which is the ring. You're basically interlinking everything together. So, like I said, for example, you post a video on YouTube, it needs to be pushed to Twitter, your Facebook fan page, and other social properties. And fortunately, because everything is going to be automated, once you do that, it will trigger and it will automate the whole process. So, it makes sense because your fans will be located at these different social properties. So, some people will be at Facebook, some people will prefer Twitter, and some people will prefer maybe Snapchat or Instagram and other social properties. But if you think about it, it sounds very time consuming and tedious, right? And yes, it is, but once everything is set up, it will actually make your life a lot easier. But like I said, don't worry, we're going to show you how to speed things up with a few dollars. So with that said, let's move on to video number four. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four. And we're going to talk about the ring, which is the strategy. So in the previous video, we discussed why having different social media properties interlinked together can help Google see you as a brand who is sharing your content to your audience. In other words, these aren't just random backlinks, but links from big sites that are branded towards your company. And this is why this is super targeted and is much more powerful than a simple backlink. Make sense? So now let's take a look at what this looks like in real life. So let's head on over to our nifty mind mapping software. I'm going to map things out so that you're going to be able to visually see how it all works. Okay, so to better understand how this works, we're going to map things out. Now, before we map things out, I want to start with some basics. And let's just pull this out here. So essentially, the concept here is as you're building your brand, you're going to have many different social properties. And let's say, for example, this is the Facebook fan page. So that, that's your fan page. And 
we've got the YouTube channel over here because th that is our end goal is to have our YouTube channel get ranked higher. So essentially what we're doing is we're getting a backlink from this to here. And this could be Facebook, it could be Twitter, it could be Instagram, it could be any other social media platform. And it, But it has to be branded towards you. It can't just be somebody else's fan page unless it is actually related. But if it's related and if it's branded as yours and it's linking to your YouTube channel, that essentially is a vote of confidence, but also it shows YouTube that you're interlinking. So that's basically the concept here. Now, if we dig a little deeper, basically what we wanna set up is every time we upload a YouTube video and it gets posted, maybe it gets posted publicly, what ends up happening is we push that YouTube video and get it embedded onto the Facebook fan page, the Twitter page, the WordPress page, and all of that. So we'll put Twitter. And we'll do WordPress. So as you can imagine, you've got the centerpiece here. You've got different social media platforms that are posted. Now, there isn't a necessarily a set rule where you have to post it to X amount of social media properties. It can be five. It can be 10. It could be 20. It could be different social media platforms. But in order to execute this and get it correctly, you will need to make sure that the platform that we use to automate this process actually supports that specific social media platform. So essentially this is what works and this is basically what it is. So obviously in order to get this to work, you'll need to have a YouTube channel, you'll need to have the Facebook fan page, you'll need to have all these items in hand so you'll need to have the username and password and all that. And we'll talk more about account creation later, but I just wanted to give you kind of a gist of what everything looks like and the visual map of it all. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. We're gonna talk about how to automate the ring. Now that you understand how everything is interlinked, how everything is connected, and how you can kind of be creative and make your own ring. So after viewing the previous video, you can imagine how tedious and overwhelming it is to have to maintain the ring, much less get it set up yourself. But lucky for you, there is a way to automate it once you have set things up. It's getting things set up is the tedious process. Now, there's a software platform called IFTTT, and there's another one called Zapier.com that allows you to automate the process of moving content all around your social properties. So you could take a YouTube video and have it pushed to your WordPress site. And by pushed, I mean have it embedded on your WordPress site and then have it shared on your Facebook fan page, your Twitter page, your Instagram, and all of that. So you have essentially what we call triggers that whenever the trigger happens, then this something else happens. So what IFTTT stands for is if, then, this, that. So if this happens, then what kind of deal? Now, between the two, Zapier will cost you a lot of money after a while. A lot of times they'll give you some free triggers and zaps, which is what they call it. And beyond that, it will cost money. Whereas with IFTTT, it's just as good, but it's free. So let's hop on over and show you how IFTTT works. 
Okay, so if you head on over to ifttt.com, that's ifttt3ts.com, you'll see this page. You can go ahead and create an account, and you'll find a lot of really cool, interesting triggers, is what we call it, in IFTTT. So what a trigger is, is let's say you upload a YouTube video, and then the system detects that the video has been uploaded. What do you want to happen after that happens? So if YouTube video has been uploaded, then post it to WordPress. Then after that, take the post on WordPress, maybe post it elsewhere or post a YouTube video to Twitter and so forth and so forth. So as you can imagine, this does get tedious, but if you map things out, if you know ahead of time, what it's gonna look like, then you can simply look at it and say, okay, I'm pointing YouTube to Twitter. So anytime video has been uploaded to YouTube, then it simply gets pushed or embedded into Twitter. So we need to make a IFTT trigger for that. So to do that, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to my applets up here and you can do a search for applets. Now services over here, I'm not gonna click that, but this tab here allows you to essentially connect to all of the services that you're gonna be using. So for example, as you can see here, I've got Tumblr to Weebly, RSS to Google Drive, a YouTube like to OneNote, YouTube like to Facebook page. And the reason why you might wanna have YouTube likes is, let's say for example that you already have maybe 50 videos on your YouTube channel, but you wanna find a way to get those videos embedded. So what we figured out is that YouTube likes is the way to go. So obviously you can't re-upload a video that hasn't already been uploaded and is already getting thousands of views. The way you go about it is create a YouTube like trigger so that you can simply like it and then it gets posted to throughout your network. Now, as you can see here, you can easily get lost in the mix of everything. So that's why I said, visually map everything out first, and then from that point, then you can simply go in and set things up. So like Blogger to Weebly, YouTube to Facebook, YouTube to Blogger, YouTube to Instapaper, YouTube to DIIGO, YouTube to Google Plus page via Buffer, and all that. And we got YouTube to Tumblr, YouTube to Twitter. So it can go on and on and on if you really want it to, or you can simply pick and choose what you want and what you don't want and go from there. Now, in order to turn them on, you can simply click here to turn them on. But for the sake of just showing you, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, the Tumblr to Weebly is activated. So when it is activated, it'll have the on button and the green light. Hello and welcome to video number six. And we're going to talk about account creation. Okay, so obviously in order to set up the IFTTT ring, you need to have accounts for all of your branded social properties. So in other words, you need to have the username and password for Facebook, for Twitter, for all the other social media properties. Now, obviously, if you already have some, then great. You don't have to create those. But for the ones that you do not have, you wanna be able to create those. Now, while that does sound very simple, there's a few things that you really need to focus on. So to make sure that you're successfully able to do this without risking your accounts being closed, and that does happen, we're gonna cover a few things that you must do with all of your accounts. In fact, some of our accounts have been banned or closed by mistake because it has to be done a certain way. So you need to make sure that you have everything correct. Now, first you need to have an email address, preferably a Gmail account or an email account that is reliable. And you need to have one email address for that. 
Typically, you want to have something that is branded as well, because you never know with these social media platforms if they're analyzing every step of the process. Now, most social media accounts we have found require you to have a unique telephone number. So you will need to use either yours or you'll need to get one. If you don't have one and you don't want to use your personal telephone, there are several places to get unique telephone numbers that can be used for both voice and SMS. And the reason why you want to have it for SMS as well is because some of these social media platforms will send you a text message. Now, one in particular that we use is called line2.com. That's line2.com. And of course, there are many out there, but this is just one that we have tested and it works really well. So a lot of times when you create a brand new social media property and account, you need to have a unique telephone number. Now, the reason for needing a unique telephone number is because most social media platforms, they really want to make sure that you are legitimate, especially nowadays. They have a lot of checks and balances and things that you need to get around to make sure that your account stays open. In fact, recently Facebook has been on a major crackdown, especially with everything that's been going on in the news. They want to make sure that you are legit and that you are not fake. Another thing is you'll also need to have a short bio, a description about your business, your website URL, a picture that is yours and a professional, or if you don't have your picture, you can use a professionally royalty-free stock photo. Now, why do you need all this information? Well, the reason why you need all this information is because when it comes to account creation, you are going to need to have every piece of these items in hand to copy and paste over. Obviously, if you outsource this process, it's going to be a lot easier. And with that case, you're definitely going to need these items. And it's just going to make your life a lot easier when you're able to copy and paste and all of that. Your picture is actually very important because even Facebook will review photos on all accounts to make sure that fake accounts are not created. In fact, we created an account one time and it was using kind of a fake image. And even though it was royalty free and all of that, Facebook declined it and in fact uh, did not approve the account. So they really want to make sure that your account is legitimate. Now, it's best if you take all this information and you write it out in an Excel spreadsheet so that you have it in hand, you have the username and passwords of all the social media properties, and you can simply log in and begin to create the accounts. So those are the kind of the best practices that we have found over the years in terms of creating accounts. And while some of those seem very basic, the one that really stood out that was really important was making sure that you had that unique telephone number. Okay, so hello and welcome to video number seven. We're gonna talk about outsourcing. So as you can imagine, creating a ring is very time consuming, especially depending on how big the ring is and how many rings there are and all of that. So it can go anywhere from a few hours to a few days to even a few weeks. And that's the reality of it is it takes hard work but once it is set up and up and running, then you will begin to get better search engine ranking and you'll be able to get more exposure. So like I said, it can take a week or two for someone who's never done this before. In fact, if you outsource it, it's most likely going to take about a week for somebody who knows how to get things done because account creation takes a lot of time. And then connecting everything from the triggers to the if else statements and all of that. So what we found over the years is outsourcing is worth it. It's only about 50 to $100 if your two weeks are worth more. Obviously, if you're struggling with money and time is of essence and you have a lot of time, then you can set these up yourself. But for the most part, we found that you really need to focus on your business and on whatever you're promoting. So go ahead and outsource this and it'll be worth your while. 
So let's discuss where you should go to find someone and lucky for you, we've actually used several of these places. So we will show you particular vendors and freelancers that we have used so that you can simply just copy and paste. So what you want to do is you want to go to a specific website called legit.com with two I's. So L-E-G-I-I-T dot com. And when you get to this page, you want to type in I-F-T-T-T up at the top in the search bar, click enter. And then you're going to see a bunch of freelancers that can provide this service. So as you can see here, it says, I will create an IFTT network and as you can see, there are like four different rings. So typically one ring will cost you about $50. So this guy here, his name is Gemini Guy. We've actually used him before and gotten fairly good results. And what he'll do is all you have to do is give him the information for, like I said, the accounts and have the username and password. And what we usually do is we create a brand new email account so it's nothing related to the the old business accounts or anything like that. So it's a new email account, all the information on a spreadsheet, and then we send it over to him. He creates the accounts, and then he logs into your IFTTT account, which you'll need an account for that as well, and then he'll set everything up. There's a lot of people that are doing this type of stuff. Some are doing like video embeds. And that's another thing with YouTube. One ranking factor is the more embeds the better but the more embeds that are done on a branded social property or a property that is actually related to your theme that is actually better the reason why is an embed is kind of considered a backlink to youtube so if we were to create a IFTT network that is specifically creating as many embeds in different social media properties that can help as well. So we can have a ring or several rings and on top of that we can have video embeds. Now the nice thing about legit.com is it's really focused on a lot of online marketing, SEO and other different services like backlinks, PBN links and all of that. Uh, but what we found is you don't want to get too fancy. You want to start out slow and work your way up. Because if you start just throwing a bunch of backlinks or even video embeds right away, it doesn't look natural, right? If you release a piece of content, sometimes it can take a week or weeks until you start getting hundreds or even thousands of likes or engagement. So you don't want to throw thousands or even hundreds of thousands of backlinks right away right so that's not going to look natural and going back to what we talked about earlier in the previous videos does it look natural if it doesn't look natural or doesn't seem natural then that can be a problem so legit.com is an awesome site to go to and this guy right here gemini guy like i said is someone that we've used now obviously you can go to these other people and look at the reviews and see if they have good reviews and see what other people are saying. Hello and welcome to video number eight. This is all about testing and making sure that you understand how to test it to make sure that it works. Because I will say once these are set up, a lot of times, sometimes they work. A lot of times, sometimes one of the items throughout the line does not work. So I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot. it. So whether you created the ring yourself or you hired somebody to do it, testing is very, very important. In fact, we outsource most of our rings, but yet we still have to go back and test it out. A lot of times when these freelancers are in the mode, they'll test it out, but they're really relying on you to test it out because they can't upload a YouTube video to your YouTube channel unless they have access. And a lot of times we don't give them access for you know privacy and security reasons. So let's go ahead and discuss how to do that. So let's hop on back over to IFTTT and I'll show you how you need to test things out. 
Okay, so we're back at IFTTT, and what I recommend that you do is you open up the Excel spreadsheet that the freelancer gives you or that you've created yourself. And on that Excel spreadsheet, it should have your username and password and all the links to all of the accounts that were created. So in that case, how do we test it out? Well, obviously, we're going to need to upload a video to YouTube. Now, I'm not going to do that now, but if you upload that, everything should work throughout the network. So the way you can test things out is simply by going to the websites that are in the Excel spreadsheet. So once you go there, if it has been posted, it works. If it's not, it's not working. If it's not working, then you'll need to kind of troubleshoot it. Either get the guy who created the ring to help you out or if you did it yourself, this is basically what you need to do. So you need to check through and figure out what's not working. So if we found that the YouTube video is not being posted to blogger.com, we need to figure out why. So we need to go to the applet. So this in case is the YouTube like to blogger. So it's a little bit different than the upload to YouTube channel. But if we click on that, you can see here that we have the applet that goes from YouTube like to blogger. So if we click on this here, you can actually get a better view of what's happening. So basically anytime a YouTube video is liked, we create a post on blogger, we put the title, we put all this. Now we need to figure out why. Usually a lot of times the reason why it's not posting is because it's not connected to the account. So you want to make sure that it's actually connected. If it is connected, then sometimes you'll need to look at, for example, this. Is it posting the title and maybe not the video? Or is it not posting everything? If it's not posting everything, it usually means it's a connection issue. If it is posting like the title, but not the, the body or the YouTube, then maybe it's the embed code is incorrect. So you can check that. So really what it comes down to is just trial and error. But if you really outsource this, it's really going to be a lot easier. But that's what we found to be the case in most of the time is that the services are not being connected. And I will say IFTTT, sometimes it can be hit or miss. And sometimes in that case, the services may or may not be working. And that's really reliant sometimes on the the YouTube channel, the social media platform, and all of that. So hopefully those tips can help you along the way when it comes to testing.